In 2008, there was a brief period where a weird TV station in New England was aired. It was rumored to have some pretty terrifying stuff on it, far worse than my personal experience with it. The name of the station was simply Channel 107. I didn't have any letter name like WBZ, WMUR, WBIN, etc. It was only Channel 107. It ran out of Brockton, Massachusetts for about two months before it was shut down. And in that time period, New England was changed by its presence. I lived in Northwood, New Hampshire at the time this happened. It started in late June. I wasn't there for the beginning of the station because I'd heard it didn't really play all that much. It was local shit mostly, as my friend Matt had relayed to me. We were both going into sixth grade that summer and started obsessions with creepy stuff like urban legends and the monsters that had lived under our beds. So a random TV station popping up like that was figurative gold to us. Matt had kept a tab on it for a little while, and had relayed this information to me at my 11th birthday party in early July. It was about a week later than that, when the station began broadcasting kids' programs like Spongebob. We watched it every now and then, and slowly started to forget about it until Matt's cousin found something. I remember it was July 11th, because it was the day the 3D journey to the center of the Earth was supposed to come out. I'd never seen a 3D movie before. Matt called me and told me that his cousin had watched a show on Channel 107. And it said that it had been really creepy. There was this puppet that had no eyes. And what looked like real bones for fingers. And it was yelling at kids through the TV. His cousin lived in another city in Massachusetts. And this was around the time we decided to see how far this channel extended. Matt called his other cousin in Ohio, and they didn't have it. However, his sister had it on Banger, Maine. We deduced that this station probably extended throughout New England, and we called my cousins in Middlebury, Vermont to confirm it. They indeed had the station. I also looked into an old friend of mine, Gary, who moved to Westbrook, Connecticut a year before this happened, and he had the station. We had fair confirmation that most of New England was receiving the station. Matt and I kept the map just for fun, and didn't realize what it would end up becoming. It was late July, perhaps even the beginning of August, when creepy stuff started happening more frequently, and it got more and more disturbing. That puppet thing had popped up a few times here and there, but other than that, nothing really happened until a show called Woods came on the air. The show was supposed to be about a man who played games with kids in the woods. But it had a much more intense and dreadful feeling about it. When I watched the show myself, home alone, of course, I saw kids running and screaming like someone was about to kill them. Which was strange because the episode was supposed to be about hide and seek. Nothing about this said hide and seek to me. The show had been filmed with some sort of shitty handheld camera that could have easily been from the 90s, and certainly gave off a disturbing Blair Witch vibe, and was in black and white. It was also in the evening, as the sky looked too dark for it to be in the midday. The show cut out after the man and the camera tackled one of the kids, and the kids screamed, don't take me back there. That last part kind of frightened me just the fear that you could hear in the child's voice. When I hit the info button on the dish remote to see what I could find out about it, the guide only had the name of the show. No information about it was available. I talked to Matt about it a few days later, when I first saw him. He said that the Manhunt episode was really frightening. They were a bunch of kids who were told to run into the woods and try not to get found, or else Mr. Puppet would get them. When the guy said that, the kids' faces all went into shock. They all ran into the woods, and the episode stopped after the first kid was found. The camera froze for a little while, so Matt saw the expression on the kid's face. It was one of absolute fear, almost like the child thought that they were going to die. Then Matt dropped the bomb on me and told me that there was a small blurb at the end of the video saying that kids could participate in the games in the woods, and just had to write a letter to a certain address in Brockton, Massachusetts. 
If I hadn't been so stupid, I probably could have prevented everything that happened next. One week later, Matt, another friend of ours named Evan, and I were all sleeping over at Matt's house. We stayed up late and watched the first Transformers movie, you know, before they became complete garbage, and ate a ton of sugar which kept us up late into the night. Matt's parents went to bed before we did. Eventually, we decided that we'd watch some more of Channel 107. When we got to the channel, we simply saw street lights. Now, it didn't hit us for a few seconds that this was filmed in our town. In fact, the whole thing was filmed about five minutes down the road from where I lived and the high school. The camera then cut out and showed two girls and a jock all standing around a convertible, all presumably drinking. I didn't realize until later that the angle that the camera used to get this video must have been from the bushes nearby. The clip lasted for probably a full minute, with some laughter every now and then, before it cut to one of the girls screaming and running towards the main road. A car passed by the foreground but didn't stop. She turned back once and then screamed. Then after that, the camera cut to something I wish so much I could have forgotten. The camera showed the two girls. Dead. Both of them had been stabbed a lot. There was blood. A lot of blood. They were both positioned in the back seat of the convertible to look like they were alive. Then the camera panned down to reveal the jock. There was some blood around the head, but other than that, there were no markings. He was completely naked, which was scarring enough. And the camera panned to a black pickup truck with a tarp in the back of it. And one of the jock's feet sticking out. We turned off the TV after that. We all decided that this needed to be told to someone, so we called the police from the house phone. We told them what we could, and hung up just as Matt's dad came downstairs, who we also told everything to. Since the TV was already on channel 107, we assumed that we could rewind it, but when we tried to, we got removed from the station and ended up on the weather channel. Matt's dad said it must have been a nightmare, but we all knew that was crap considering that all of us had seen it. We tried to leave it behind until about two weeks later when I watched another local station, WCNT from Portland, Maine. The thought popped into my head to see about channel 107, so I started flipping through the channels when I briefly caught a glimpse of WBZ, and the caption below had New Hampshire printed nice and neatly in the bottom corner. I stopped for a moment and listened to how the female news anchor read about how, besides the two teens found dead behind Coe Brown Academy, the body of a seven-year-old boy who'd been missing for almost a month out of Marshfield, Massachusetts, had also been found about 200 yards away. The investigation began into what did this, and Matt had informed me that around the same time, Channel 107 had gone off the air, and within a week, it was like the channel never existed. In Brockton, Massachusetts, about two months after the two girls and boy were found in town, and Channel 107 went off the air, Massachusetts State Police found the site of Channel 107. It was an abandoned office complex that had the most basic equipment for running a television station, and three bodies of missing children had been found upstairs. The basement was the real shit show, as there were over 30 dead bodies down there along with a strange symbol painted in blood all over the walls. The symbol looked very similar to one that you'd see on a Mitsubishi car. Some of the bodies were children that had gone missing over the time the channel had been up and running, including some of the kids seen in the Woods video, and some of the bodies were missing person cases that dated back to 1997. Whoever had done this was obviously dedicated to murdering people, and there were some terrible ways the people in the basement had died. There were also three doors in the basement, each led to a room worse than the last. The first room was children who died of malnourishment and starvation, slowly and incredibly agonizing. There were seven bodies in that room. In the next room, there were three dead bodies. 
Two were amateur bodybuilders, and the other was the jock in the video. According to the police, this was the necrophiliac room. Just traces of semen were found all over the place. Unfortunately, none of it led to this sick fuck being caught. The next rooms were only heads. Some of the heads were humans. Some were animals. All the bodies were not located in that basement. In fact, I think only two of the victims were fully identified. The case still remains open, as the person or these people, potentially, are still wanted. Now this is where the story of the killer, or killers, ends. And mine begins. I took up journalism as my major. I'm currently attending UNH, about 20 minutes away from where I live. I live at home and work at a diner in town as a dishwasher. Currently, I'm finishing up an article for my Journalism 2 class that I wrote about this event, and I found out just what Channel 107 was capable of. The police would never tell you is that some of the equipment found in the complex was actually tracking equipment to try and locate all the places where Channel 107 was being viewed. Thank God my parents are selling the house because... As we were packing up, I opened up my closet and started cleaning everything out when I found out that that symbol, the one that had been sprayed all over the basement, was now painted in the corner of my closet. We, of course, called the police. They did a massive search of the town and some surrounding towns. They found another symbol sprayed in the tool shed behind Matt's old house, and the symbol was scratched into Evan's basement. He's tracking us now. And I'm going to use the journalism skills I have to track him right back. 